So it's a quite a while since we've done that last bit of work because we just didn't get the time. But we're very busy, busy time of year. But Sunday now, and while you guys are probably watching our Sunday video, we're deciding to do a little bit of work on it again, but maybe two, three hours of them doing well on it. And um, we should get a lot of it put together by then. We'll have to take our fan back off, possibly. We're gonna have a look at that first. But our pulley on our dynamo um, is wrong. Uh, the ratio is wrong for it. Um, we had a guy out here yesterday. But he works in, in Rudden uh, Electronics there to fix car starters and uh, alternators, all sorts of stuff like that. He's been doing that for a long, long time now. But Adrian is the fella's name. Great strong name that is. But I only recently found out that he lives literally a mile and a half away from me. I never knew that. He bought a house in the area back a few years ago and I've been talking to this guy over in that place which is a little bit of a track for me but I've been talking to him every single day I'm over there. He's the man I deal with and I never knew he lived so close to me. He is really interested in these type of tractors as well. I think he has a couple of his own. But it was them that rebuilt the starter for me. Done an excellent job. Them guys don't know anything about our YouTube channel whatsoever. So then he contacted me and asked me a few days later did you get the starter put on the tractor? I said I did. Well it's not fully tightened up yet. What about the wiring he said then? Did you get anything done with the wiring? Well I said I bought a loom um, in John Connolly's all pre-wired. But you see the thing is with this tractor for me it's hard to replace something you don't know what's missing. And I know a lot of people do give me loads of help especially from the vintage club and you guys he was able to come up and give me a world of information there yesterday and tell me things that are missing and things that i need to get and the way to approach things and that was great for me it only took him half an hour he fitted all the wires left them loose but fitted everything where it's supposed to go into the clocks and things like that and told me about the things that are missing on the dash this here is a cod of a thing that someone put on and that has to come off. Yeah, it's just an old kill switch, shouldn't be there. I know the tank, lots of diesel leaks too, we have to address. I want to get the auxiliary tank put back in. You can even see someone cut the pipe off it here. So took the auxiliary tank out of it and probably took the whole system when they were at it. I'm missing the heater button here as well. So he told me to try to place down one of those. This hole here, probably put a switch in there for the lights. On the front, we have got lights for the back wings as well. But for now, we're going to change this pulley. We're going to fit a new thermostat on here, clean this area up. We're going to put a new thermostat housing and we're going to fit our new radiator into place. So we'll get at it. If you look here now, you'll see that our pulleys these two pulleys are dead on in line. This pulley on the water pump is too far out. Um, there is an adjustment on them. I'm going to sit a belt in and see how far it is, but I think there is an adjustment behind there that we can let that in ever so slightly. It's not far out, but it's not right at the same time. Now, I don't know if you can see that. Do you see the little twist? A little bit too far out on that pulley. So we'll have to take this back off again and have a look and see, hopefully, we have a little bit of adjustment that we can move it back. So this is the little guy I'm talking about. I'm not sure if that's supposed to move in and out like that. I don't think it is. It's supposed to be tightened enough that it doesn't move. And you want to get it in as far as you can, so, but it's not hitting the housing. So that's as far as I can put it in there. That's a little 10 nut and you tighten that. And it's supposed to hold it nice and secure there. So now we have it back on the fan. And the pulleys are now in line. And I've worked out a treat. We had it adjusted completely back as far as it would go. But it was quite easy done. Nothing hard about that. Uh, we put our belt on now. We'll tighten everything up. And that'll be that job completed. Our belt is nice and tight, our fan's in the right place, the belt is dead on, straight in line. I'm not sure about that water pump, I'll not know until we run the tractor what that water pump is like. If there's anything wrong with it, we'll change it and put a brand new um, water pump on it. But for now, we'll just see what it does. Um, next thing we're going to do now, we're going to fit our new thermostat in, and we're going to put our new thermostat housing um, on top of that. So we have our thermostat housing all cleaned up. There's a lot of old gasket and a gasket sealer still on it, so I give it a good old cleaning up, especially the seating for the thermostat. And as I said before, when I stripped this down, there was no actual thermostat in it 
at all. Um, that's not uncommon. Some people just do not put the thermostat back into them. I often wonder why, because thermostats are <laughs> relatively cheap. But that's what the people do, and they just take them out of them all together. Um, it definitely will be much safer with a thermostat in it. So we're going to put the thermostat in. We're going to put a new gasket, gasket sealer, and a new thermostat housing. You don't go mad with this stuff either. You don't need a whole pile of it. A new thermostat will pop in there. Okay, so that's our thermostat housing on. Simple job, anybody could do that. So next thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna tighten up these hoses, put them all into their proper places, and then we're gonna fit our radiator. So this is a brand new radiator. The only thing it didn't come with, is it didn't come with any rubbers. I got one of the old hoses to come off the radiator, and I cut it up and made these little um, rubbers for it. It does need a little bit of rubber just to take that vibration out from the front end. Just like that. So there is the new radiator fitted in. The only thing I'm missing that I see in other ones is this little arm that goes from here to here. So I'm gonna either make one or try to find one on the internet. Um, but I'm missing that, I see that there now. Um, otherwise than that, the hoses will hold it in place and the bolts on the need for now until I can get something that'll fit from there to there. I might just make a wee plate um, quite easily that'll bolt from one to the other. A lot of people did say, try to fix the old one if you can. The old one that was in this tractor wasn't original. It was off a different tractor and it was past repair and trust me I've had radiators repaired before and this one was in bits, wasn't even worth looking at. I'm not going to throw anything out that I take off this tractor. Even the old mud guards, if we do take them off, I'm not going to throw anything out. I'm going to hold on to them and if I can get them repaired, I will. But for now we want to get this tractor running and a new radiator will certainly help that. Right, so, so these are the two steps that we got. <laughs> they're actually different color. I didn't realize that, they're different colors, but uh, they're fully painted. Are they primed or painted? I think they're actually painted. Um, I never realized they were different colors, but I don't care because they're not gonna be staying that color, that's for sure. Um, I'm gonna be probably sanding it and letting the weather get at it and rust it down. And then when we do go to put something on this tractor, whether it's going to be a, a clear coat or whatever it's going to be, I want everything to match and I will make it match. I know there's guys, that, friends of mine, that said that they can make these new panels look old. Um, but you're better off with new panels when it comes to leg ease because anything I've seen, uh, even though it's rare to get one, they were all rusted um, in the same places. So, rather than safe than sorry, so we have our two brackets. We're going to mount them on now and we're going to sit these into place. I don't know if you guys have spotted it, but I spotted it when I put on the first one. And it's definitely an issue. We have to figure out what's wrong here. Do they have to be moved in? They can't really be moved in. Are they the wrong brackets? Well, they're listed for a TEF, but when this pedal goes down, it's gonna hit. So we're gonna have to figure out what's causing that. Um, guys, let me know. I can certainly send them back, there's no issue there, but it's just, it is hitting, and it shouldn't be hitting like that. So we have to figure out what's going on there. So that's it, at least it has a set of floor pans on it. They may not be staying. We'll have to figure out what's wrong here or why that's not sitting where it's supposed to be. Should we raise the pedals further up? Adjust them there and that way when you push them down, they don't hit the pan. Let me know guys what you've done with yours. Um, if they're the wrong pans, we'll just send them back and we'll get a new set made. We can alter them. I can, of course, 
I can cut them across here and fold them down, but I don't want to do that unless I really have to. Just after getting up on it there now, and the difference they make is unbelievable. It should be none of them from day one as far as I'd be concerned. Anyway, next job we're going to do is we're going to take this exhaust off because it's completely busted on the neat here. And we went to start it the other day and the smoke was just billowing out of it here. So we're going to take it off and put a new exhaust on. I did get a new bracket for the exhaust, but it's just not the right size. So I'm going to put the old one back on. It's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Well, the one thing there's definitely no pint buying second hand, and that is an exhaust. You know yourself the way exhausts are, they will rot, and that one there that was on it wasn't even an original one for this, and it's all patched up on the bottom, but you can see where it's blown out again there, and it's not definitely not the right one for it. Too short as well. I suppose the original exhaust would have come down underneath and out the back. I don't like that. I like the look of having the exhaust up, especially when you're only doing little runs and things. It'd be different if you were doing a day's work with it. Yes, it keeps the fumes from blowing in on top of your face, but this exhaust is a bit higher and it should stop that from happening. Right, so just after fitting this seat spring. It's not probably the right seat spring for it, I know that. The seat that I have is this one. It sits on there, so it doesn't line up with any of the holes the seat, but you know something? The holes themselves aren't really put in the right place because even that square is off center. I actually like this bracket that's on it. It's probably, I may be wrong, but I'd say it's made for a seat that has a kind of a flip up and down. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill these two holes out through the seat and I'm gonna drill either these two holes or the center one. I'm gonna put the bolt in there, probably just the center one. Now a lot of people um, complain about them breaking in the center um, and I don't blame them for breaking in the center because the seats themselves are incredibly light. This is one I got brand new in Connolly's. All the new ones that come are the same. They're all just really, really light material. There is another seat that I had before this one and I left it back. It was for probably for a hundred series. Um, it had a solid back on it, but this one seems to be more or less the original one for it. Any paint you see that's on the steps or on the seat is going to be taken off. I'm going to be sanding all that off because I do not like that look. It looks horrible, a uh, mixture of colors. So what I intend to do when I get this tractor finished and driving is to kind of take these things all back off again, sand off all that undercoat that's on, even get rid of all this. Leave it out, let it build up its own patina over a bit of time. They'll certainly not be keeping paint on anything like that. I want everything to match. I want everything to weather in together because I don't think at the moment we're going to be painting this tractor. So I don't want to keep anything that has paint on it like that. Another thing I was thinking about doing was to actually make a plate here to, to support this seat much better. But people do complain about them being pulled back and forth. But I think when I have the two holes here, that's going to support that better. But if not, I think I'll make a little plate underneath that will come out and kind of carry these two holes as well. And that will give it a hell of a support. Um, but for now, we'll just fit it on. We'll see what it's like first. And if it needs that, that's what I'll do to it. So I'm going to mark this out relatively straight. We'll drill these out and we'll fit them into place. Every so often just give a wee bit of oil, take your time. All right, so I have the first nut in place, I haven't tightened up yet, but it's in in place. I'm gonna put my two nuts in here. Now, a few of you are gonna say that's not the way you do that. I do know that, but it will be stronger than it would have been just with that single bolt there. It definitely will give it extra strength. I will be putting a cushion on top of this. I don't want to sit on a cold steel pan I want to sit on a nice cushion and there will be a cushion coming that suits this seat and we'll just slot straight into place and cover all of this. That is really solid. That has made a really good job of that, just putting them two bolts in there. I don't know if you're supposed to do that. I don't think you are. A lot of people might say, don't do it like that. 
Well, do you know something? If you can do something a little bit better than what it was originally, yeah, do it. But there's one thing I have to do now. I think you know what it is. Yeah. Well, another thing that helps an awful lot is them steps. Getting up and onto the tractor is completely different than having them steps on. I'm really pleased I put them on. Now a lot of you are going to say, this brake pedal, it's hitting. When I spoke to a couple of people, especially a, a page group called Friends of Ferguson, Friends of the Ferguson, it's on Facebook. I asked them a bit of knowledge on it and they said, knock it off here, raise your pedal up. There is also one you can get that's a straight pedal and doesn't have this seemingly this bend in it either. So we'll try raise it up, I'm not going to do that now today, but we will try raise it up and see will that clear it, and that should solve the problem. I can't see why it wouldn't. These bolts are, what you may say, welded together to this with rust. Um, so I'm gonna to have to put a bit of penetration fluid on that, leave them for a bit, um, and then we're gonna apply some heat and try to get them off. If the heat doesn't work, I'll weld on a bolt. On both of them, we'll try it that way. If that doesn't work and the ring off, then we'll just have to drill them out and retap them and do it that way. But the new battery holder is sitting here ready to go on and that's going to be going in the place of it. And hopefully we get one of them old Lucas covers that sits on top of the battery as well. I'm not putting a battery back on the other side. I know originally it would have come with two 6 volt batteries on both sides. I'm not doing that. I'm just leaving with one 12 volt battery here. And then my guy from Rudden Electrics has my old battery cable. He's going to run the round and he's going to connect up all these electrics. Also was in John Condy's the other day, just getting actually a couple of parts from a case. And Phelan that works there said that they had an old 20 out the back. There's nearly nothing left in it, but there's a dash there. And notice your dash has a good few holes in it. And he says, there's one there. Now it might look rough at a distance, because that's just paint being chipped off. This here is all blistered. I'll have to look and see what's behind that. I have a new plate ordered, which gives you the kind of the instructions on how to work this um, heating system. Um, it's got an original clock. It's just a pity it is well corroded, but it's there. This part here itself will fill this hole as someone put in a kill switch which looks absolutely horrendous it's there so i'm not sure whether i'll use it or not because it has a lot of rust along the set top mine doesn't have that rust there but it doesn't have any holes in it or mine does i don't know we'll see about that dash i'm just not 100 percent sold on what i'm going to do and um, it is a lot better in places where mine's bad and then it's worse in places where mine's good so we're just going to have to work on what we do with that now there's things you can keep and there's things you can't keep an old box like that, that's rotten, it's all twisted, someone has done a couple of repairs on it already. For the price of it and the size of it, it's not worth trying to fix it up at all because I don't know what I'll do with it, whether I will fix it or not, but I picked up a brand new one and it's painted and all. I know it's painted, everything's painted. I know what you're going to say, that's new, but the other one is just so badly twisted and everything. A new box is not the end of the world. I can get this all sanded off and I can get it back to a patina look. There's so many things you can do to make new stuff look old, but I don't want to leave anything on this tractor that's rotten. At the end of the day, I want to have it mechanically good, and I want to have everything sound on it. So whatever we can save, we will save, but things like this, I think, is worth replacing. <laughs> now, my bolts that I have are way too long, but they're fine, because I cut them off on the other side. It makes no difference whatsoever. But I'd rather use these flathead ones rather than hex bolts. Nothing gets caught on them, and that would seem to be a much, much better job. On these tractors, them days, everything was used with just a washer and a split washer to tighten everything up. And that's what I'm going to be putting back in this tractor. I'm not going to be using any lock nuts of any sort through this tractor because they just look out of place. Easy fit, no bother, easy peasy. The old box is well strained. Am I going to throw it out? Nope. Sandblast the whole paint off it and let the weather get at it. It will rust it enough that I can just sand it down again and put a clear coat over it or just rub it down with an oily rag or something and that'll get rid of all that new look. But if it doesn't work out, I will keep this and get it repaired and put it into its place. But they're just so cheap, it'd be a shame not to just put a new one on it. Now you might wonder where my father is. I said he would be in this. He will. He was actually here a few minutes ago and I hadn't even the camera set up and having a chat about it. But he will be on probably the next one. He will be showing his face trust me he will be taking part in this restoration he is helping me behind the scenes every part you've seen in today's video has come from john Conti tractors and um, as i said before we just buy it all online and it's delivered to your door within two days you just can't beat that kind of service 
going by the comments, I know a lot of you are restoring tractors of your own. And a lot of people are actually storing tractors the same as this. And I'm making mistakes, there's no doubt about it. I will be making mistakes. I probably have made loads of them and you'll probably address that. No worries whatsoever. That's just part of the crack. I'm not a mechanic. I'm a dairy farmer. But I do know little bits and pieces about simple things like that. It's not hard. It's not rocket science. But I'm going to leave it for there. That's it for today's video. As always, hit that sub button. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and on TikTok. Until the next one, talk to you again.